In this video, I want to discuss a recent panel upgrade to my 1976 Cessna 150M. The upgrade had been a long time in the planning stage, and I had a number of goals that I wanted to get accomplished. While the panel was clean and functional, as you see here in the picture, it had started looking dated, and it lacked a WASP GPS for LPV approaches. The aircraft does have an IFR certified GPS in the Garmin GNC 300XL, but it was only certified for LNAV approaches. My upgrade plan would retain the GNC 300XL as a completely separate and independent number two GPS and COM. I had seven main goals going into this project, which I've outlined here. The first of these was, as I mentioned before, to add a WAS-enabled GPS, but I also needed to have ground-based nav as a backup together with a additional comm radio. My second goal was to add a horizontal situation indicator, or HSI, which would be coupled to the number one GPS nav. The HSI overlays the navigation indications over top the heading display, which allows for easier orientation and enhanced situational awareness. In addition, vertical guidance is also shown on the HSI, which enables a more rapid scan for approaches. And finally, because the HSI combines two instruments into one, it saves panel space. My third priority was the addition of an independently powered standby attitude indicator. This was for two reasons. First, I wanted to retain the vacuum system for the primary attitude indicator and heading indicator, HSI. And second, I wanted to remove the turn coordinator in accordance with the guidance given in Advisory Circular 91-75. I hear many concerns these days about the reliability of vacuum systems, oftentimes offered as rationale to upgrade to glass. In some 40 years of flying and thousands of hours, I have had three vacuum pump failures I can recall. By comparison, in the 13 years I flew behind the Aspen, and it's a great product, I had the same number of failures on the Aspen. Glass displays have their own potential sources of failure, not to mention the need for precise calibration. If vacuum pumps are replaced on a proactive basis, I'm confident the system will be as dependable as any other. However, in the event of a vacuum or even a gyroscope failure, I have a fully independent electrical attitude indicator as a backup. Finally, I wanted to add an outside air temperature gauge and all new metal instrument panels to get rid of the 70s style plastic and give the panel a more modern look. Panel lighting was to be improved by the addition of post lights and internally lit instruments. The single most important design element for me was the interface between the pilot and the equipment, and that it matched my experience and my style of flying. This would mean no touch screens, but instead buttons and knobs that allow a tactile interface. And common functions should be accessed with little need for diving into menus. So what were my options? I have flown Garmin's GTN series avionics, and I've come to my own conclusion about usability, as we each must do. While they're powerful and feature-packed, the design logic of Garmin is simply not for me. With regard to a WASH GPS Navcom then, this would leave only the Avidyne 440 for consideration. It is a wonderful unit, modeled after modern FMS design, and checks almost all the boxes for me. But at over $15,000, the cost is simply prohibitive. So what could offer almost all the features and architecture of the modern day 440, but at a much lower cost? Well, the answer to me was known all along. The incomparable Apollo CNX-80. Designed over 20 years ago by UPS Aviation Technologies and later in conjunction with Apollo, the CNX-80 was actually the first commercial WASP GPS. Its design and interface was taken directly from airline flight management systems and it remains a very powerful GPS NAVCOM even by today's standards. In fact, Garmin bought the rights many years ago and simplified the unit's functionality to create the 430 and 530. While it is true the product is no longer supported by Garmin, the CNX-80 is robust in its construction and can still be serviced. Even factoring in the cost of a spare or two puts the cost well below the 440's price tag. And as long as Jepson keeps supporting the nav data, which I suspect they will do, I'm willing to assume all the additional risks of installing this legacy unit. So with all of the design criteria finalized, a plan was created. In addition to the CNX-80 serving as the WASP GPS, 
It also provides VOR navigation and primary communication. It is coupled to the Sentry HSI. The GNC 300XL remains as a wholly independent second IFR certified GPS with its own dedicated indicator and annunciator panel on the glare shield. It also serves as a second comm radio. The ancient Cessna transponder has been replaced with a remote Garmin GTX 33 that is driven by the CNX 80. This saves significant avionics space, which I hope to later utilize for a future autopilot control panel at the top of the avionics stack. The RC Allen Mini 6 was selected as the independent standby attitude indicator and also offers redundant airspeed, altitude, and heading through an internal magnetometer that seems to work quite well. The new clock and outside air temperature replace the removed turn coordinator in the lower left. Finally, the original analog ammeter in the upper right was replaced with a digital version that now also shows voltage. So how did it come together? Here's one more quick look at the before. And here's an in-flight photo from the test flight not that long ago. I'm very pleased with how the panel turned out. It met every objective I sought out and provides a wonderful IFR platform and flying experience for the little Cessna 150. One item you'll notice that I hadn't mentioned is the Garmin 696 shown in the picture. In addition to georeferenced moving maps and charts, the 696 also provides ADSB traffic and weather together with terrain and associated alerts. And finally, the panel lighting has been vastly improved over the factory single red overhead light that was virtually useless. Post lighting now illuminates the airspeed indicator, altimeter, and VSI while the attitude indicator and HSI have their own internal illumination. I hope to be adding more videos soon that will show the panel in operation and expand on the features of the CNX-80. In the meantime, take care and fly safe.